What's up guys, it is the Sound Alchemist here with Gersh One, And we're back at it again, bringing you 40 facts on nothing because this is a For the Greater yeah. Gersh, tell them what it is. So this is a series where me, Gersh One, and the Sound Alchemist sit down with you, the viewer, and you ask us a question, we answer it for you. You guys can ask a question down in the comments below by putting question in front of the question. Um, and then we'll answer it next week. That's, that's kind of what we do. So, this question comes from All Might. He asks, what would have happened if Horus won the battle against the Emperor and the heresy itself? That is a very loaded question because even thinking about that is heresy in and of itself. Yes, even mentioning Horus's name is, is grounds for the Ordo Hereticus, Hereticus to come and, and slice us in half. Uh, but luckily, we're protected by this 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 warp. This is this is basically the hyperbolic time chamber inside the warp. But anyways, so <laughs> um, to so answer your question, uh, start it off, G Bang. So here's the thing: everybody considers the death of Horus as a good thing during the Horus Heresy, and of course, why wouldn't you, right? But it's kind of counterintuitive once you understand the whole story of the Conclave? No. The Cabal. The Cabal. Uh, we did a 40 Facts on the Cabal, and basically they're an organization that predate the Emperor and Humanity. Um, made up of probably old ones, um, but that's not guaranteed or anything. But the whole idea was that there was two outcomes, two possible outcomes from the Horus Heresy. The Emperor dying, or the Emperor surviving and being what he is today. So basically Horus winning, or the Emperor winning. The Cabal actually wanted um, Alpharius to join that of um, chaos. And that is because, am I right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that is because Alpharius giving his support to chaos would lead to the death of the Emperor, meaning that Horus would be the new Emperor and he would continue on slaughtering all of mankind to the point where there would be no one left in humanity to pray to these Chaos Gods, thus ending Chaos once and for all. Yeah, or weakening Chaos there to the go. point where yeah. the Cabal can come in and like do something with the warp. Um, so in reality, Horus was the savior, not to the Imperium, but he was the savior to the overall universe. To the universe. Yeah. And uh, he was killed. Um, Alpharius decided, like, no, we're n I'm not gonna do what the Cabal wants me to do, and I want the Emperor to win. Right. The Emperor won, but at the cost of humanity slowly dying over millennia of years. And empowering chaos. That's right. So the warp is being strengthen because the emperor won so horus was our savior and he's gone now he was crucified by the emperor but good question yeah. let's move on to some more this next one is by dragon punch 903 what type of weapon from any game movie franchise etc would you like to see in 40k he says he would like to see the wonder waffle from call of duty zombies What's the Wonder Waffle? I believe, if, if it's what I'm thinking, it's that one gun that shoots electricity and it like bounces from like zombie to zombie, killing like a large group. That's really cool, yeah. Uh, that would be awesome. I don't know, what, what weapon would you want? From anything and anywhere? Oh man. It's like, there's so many awesomeness, but I think a lightsaber. Lightsaber would be pretty bad yeah. in the 40k universe. Uh, I was I was going along the lines, same lines. So it's like the sword from Halo. Oh yeah, the Covenant. The uh, Covenant sword. Energy sword. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's kind of the same thing. Next question uh, comes from Sanders Stolen. Are you guys planning on making more creepy pasta? Yes, of course. Um, it's just it's just really slow because work and family and whatnot. But I've gotten myself. To a point where I feel, or I know how to time myself better, and I can create these creepy pastas, which I'm working on right now. Uh, so soon. Wait for uh, Halloween. That's when we're gonna be dropping them like, like candy. Yeah, wait a couple months. <laughs> That's what, like ten months from now. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. Uh, Jack Fitch. Why did the Emperor wait so long to establish the Imperial truth and absolve human religion? 
Additionally, how did he go about to doing this? And he says, thanks for all your hard work. Cool, thank you. Um, it is hard work. So, the way that the, the Imperial, during the Great Crusade or whatever, um, there's many ways that you can spread the Imperial truth. I think the most common way, I guess, would just be to destroy anything else. Right. Um, the word bearers were actually created specifically for this. Mm -hmm. So they would go into a planet that had a pre, like let's say Christianity, right? They would get rid of all the cathedrals, they would get rid of anything pertaining to Christianity or whatever religion and instill the imperial truth. Their whole thing was that their Primarch was corrupted since the beginning of chaos. Right. Um, so instead of continuing that, once they met with their Primarch, the Primarch corrupted them and said, take away all these um, religious, or th these religions and instill chaos cults. Yeah, so, and then like other ways would be um, just the educating uh, the public and whatnot. Uh, but the reason that not every single planet could have been, um, what is it called? Reconstituted? Yeah, to the imperial uh, truth. It's because not every single world was conquered. A lot of them were allies, um, or there was diplomacy involved. The best one that I can think of is Mars. Mars was always allowed to keep their unbelief in the, um, what the is it machine called? god, the, the omnissiah. Yeah, and their whole reason for that is because the emperor needed Mars, just like the emperor needed all these other planets. No matter how small they might be, they might be a big thing to the sectors. Whereas, like, if I'm gonna go in there and destroy this planet, it's gonna create the entire or the entire sector would revolt against the Imperium. Why not just let them keep believing in their you know, religion for now, and um, you know, slowly weed that out? And it's like Mars was a very big uh, producer of war machines and stuff, and. Obviously, the Imperium is very, their number one focus is war. That's how their uh, economy is surrounded and focused on. So, of course, you'd want something like that produces forge worlds and all this stuff on your side. So, Yep. Next one is by Dave Cortez. Senpai, I'm going to start all the mighty path on the Grey Knights. What models should I buy first? After the Strike Squad, should I buy a Dread Knight or Troop Transport? Um, in my opinion, I'd say stay away from regular troops, go full out, um, well not troops, regular uh, marines, go full out terminators, paladins, um, dread knights, and uh, what's that thing called, the imperial knight, because um, I feel like the grey knights are more tailored to small model counts and heavy hitters. And I feel like just the regular strike squads doesn't cut it. So definitely at least two Dread Knights. Um, if you do go the route with getting the strike squad, obviously go with Rhinos or some kind of transportation. There you go. Next question comes from El Colt. Could there be a surviving human settlement at the edge of the galaxy? Survivors of the Golden Age that on the 41st millennium remain concealed from the brutal eye of the Imperium. I just wanted to thank you for making me interested into war gaming. Now I'm building my first army. All thanks to you. That is awesome. It's really good to hear. Um, Cause part of the hobby is the whole um, creating your army. I think that's that's the funnest part for me, even though I haven't, I haven't been working on my armies. But anyways, um, yeah, there's a possibility that there is a civilization. There's actually, there was a lot of um, there are a lot of Imperial Knight worlds, knightly worlds, yeah. that are still undiscovered and whatnot. Now, is there one that um, is far back, as far as the Golden Age? Um, what is it, the Dark Age of Technology? Yeah. Um, yeah, but I don't think GW is going to go into that. that yeah. Yeah. Or Earth, they do. It's going to be... It's going to be like a, a main event type thing, like where they find the civilization and they have STCs. Mm -hmm. uh, the STCs are the standard template construct, which gives them information on the technology of the Dark Crusade. So the Imperium would be sent out to like, or not the Imperium, the Adeptus Mechanicus 
who send out uh, their their people and who would be against the Adeptus Mechanicus? The Dark Adeptus Mechanicus. Yeah, there you go. Alright, next question. Dante Revelation. Can Nurgle plague zombies infect orcs? Because that would be terrifying. Uh, yes, they can. Because as far as I know, there are Nurgle orcs, or at least Nurgle infected orcs. Um, there's actually an image we used on... Was it on like a Death World or something like that? About a Nurgle orc? Probably, yeah. Yeah, but uh, it, it, it has been official that GW put out this artwork for Nurgle or orcs, so it is possible. Yep. It's just that the um, orc reproductive cycle is so resilient um, that once an, a Nurgle orc dies, it doesn't necessarily come back as a Nurgle. Like, it has to get reinfected. Um, Roger Rangel, what do you think Lorgar was, or do you think Lorgar was to blame for the Horus heresy? This is going back to the yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's kind of similar to the first question. Um, Lorgar was responsible for getting Horus to become chaotically involved. Yeah. Now, there is, I mean, we, we got two Primarchs left to do lore on, Horus and Perturabo. So uh, wait for that lore and we'll get more in depth to your question. But thank you. Alexander Lanier. He's got two questions. The first being, why do you think the Tau can make a battle suit? Or do you think the Tau can make a battle suit that can match a Primark? Hell no. Nah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, as good as their battle suits are, I don't see them making something that can fight at like supersonic speeds. Because according to this, the uh, Primarchs, they like... They're fighting so fast you can barely keep up to what they're doing and I don't see Tau technology going to this point especially in close combat so that's not gonna happen and they'll never be able to use psychic abilities and yeah. the prime marks could next question comes from skip skip me lad this is 101 what would it be like if the Empire and the Eldar through some through some means probably the Emperor uh, the Elder and the Imperium became allies of some sort. Uh, now, they, I don't think they can now. Um, so, with the whole fracture of Bile Tan, was it fracture or destruction? No, it was fracture. Yeah, so there's a new cat, there's a new Eldar god coming out, and it's either going to mean survival for the Eldar or more destruction for the Eldar. Um, so, I think a lot of the people are gonna flock towards the belief in uh, in Ned and that's completely against the Imperium just because it's a god of death well it's because it's an alien yeah um, so I don't think both ways I think the Eldar wouldn't want to work with humans because they think that humans are beneath them and of course they have a fucking god now um, that might save their race and then the Imperium is too xenophobic right this one's by Sean Mattingly. Who'd win in a fight between a space marine and one million lions? <laughs> Do space marines have the endurance to take on a million lions? Keep in mind that if the space marine were to kill one lion every three seconds, it would take him 35 days to kill all of them. Yes, this is a serious question. Thanks if you answer it. The space marine would destroy a million lions. I think so, yeah. Lions, lions don't want to attack people. Um, Unless they're like really, really hungry, but then they're probably weak. Yeah, or like whenever you see, like in the, on the Discovery Channel or the planet, Animal Planet, Animal Planet, like whenever a lion gets hurt, like stabbed by an antler or something, like he backs away, and all the rest of the people back away too. I think that's what would happen. Like the Emperor or the Primarch would swing an axe, hurt a bunch of them. And they'll just kind of like disperse. Just scatter. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, at that point, it's just this, the Space Marine taking his time, you know, killing each lion. And remember, um, according to GW, they don't hurt animals like that no more. <laughs> they, don't, they would never wear their pelts. Next question. Uh, D. San 805. What would the Emperor of Mankind be more likely to eat? Muffins, cookies, or perhaps a third unknown grimdark future snack. Rice cakes. Yeah, it's probably rice cakes. Probably some kale. 
Um, next question comes from Callum Dixon. Do the Tyranids have a god? The hive mind may have one, or are these too bestial to have one? Are they too bestial to have one? So no, the, the hive mind is not a god. Um, it's just a highly adapted species that communicates through its own mind. Like ants. <laughs> what about uncles? No, not like um, uncles. Connor Casson. Is Cain a chaos god? If so, what would happen to the Eldar if he just walked away and decided that he wanted chaos marine armies instead? So, Kayla Mensha Cain is not a chaos god, but he does have a lot in common with the chaos god Korn. Uh, they're both red, they both have to do with fire, they both are the, uh, god of the gods of war, yeah, so. But no, I don't, I don't see a god just walking away and saying, I like these guys better. Yeah, it doesn't really work that way. Um, oops, next question comes from... Oh, come on. Uh, Alexander Schneider. So between 30k and 40k, the Imperium seems to be on standstill. I'm gaining their technical stance in the galaxy. I would say this is due to fighting enemies on all fronts, but the Tau seem to be on, on the up and up, despite all that's happening in the galaxy. So would the emperor, so would the emperor current position being fused to the throne and keeping his own personal influence on man, has put mankind in the state of maintenance regression rather than advancing? Um, yeah, that's yeah. how it is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. <laughs> Booty juice. Being stud muffins that you two are, would it be okay for me to use this pickup line? I put the STD in stud. All that's missing is you. Yep. Damn. It's a good thing you ain't here, because I'd be on you like white on rice. Yeah. <laughs> good pickup line, though. If you guys have any good um, pickup lines, comment down below. I would love to hear them. Uh, next question comes from Ifurt on Znola. Is it possible that Ined could reverse the Necron Deathless Soul Estate? Spoiler alert! Ined already res reversed the Soul Estate of the Rubric Marines in Ariman's army. Um, good question. Maybe. Yeah, that's something to ponder about. Well, hold on. No, because Ariman, like the Rubric Marines. They were souls trapped in armor. Right. Necrons don't have a soul at all. It was consumed by the, the gods, right? The oh, star yeah, gods. yeah. So they're basically just husks. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Do you, no, I think the only ones that still retain like their souls are like the... Uh, the Triarchs. The, like, yeah, the, like the Triarchs, the Royal Guard. Because some of them actually still have pieces of their personality. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're like, oh, you know, this guy wants to attack this dynasty. They basically did that to make the uh, Necrons not a mindless, killing, robotic thing. Which they nerfed, or they changed in 5th edition lore, I believe. Um, this one's by... Would, would you guys like that to happen though? I'm, I'm curious. Comment down below if you would, if you would mind Necrons becoming a, like a not a soulless, like, legion like it is now. Because like right now, I think some of the draw to the Necrons is the fact that it's just one guy calling the shots. It's like a robot army. Basically, yeah. But if you take that away, would it be something that you still want to play? I don't play them. But I think I, 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 it would kind of piss me off because it's just like, well, the lore was there. Now you're changing them. They're not, they're not um, robots no more. That's right. Next question. Oh, uh, is that you? Yeah. Um, Kevin Brand, does the Void Dragon slash Machine Spirit have influence on the Tau since they're all about that tech? They're all about that base. Mm -hmm. What was the question? Uh, can the, is the Machine God and the uh, Machine Spirit and the uh, Void Dragon, like, are, do they involve, are they involved with the Tau in any way, basically? No. I don't think so. Yeah. So like any type of thing from the machine spirit 
like any little bit of evidence that the machine spirit is, is, is real, I believe is a manifestation of so many, uh, what are they called? Like the Edmac believers or the, yeah, the machine god believers believing it and it's slightly tipping the warp to the point where they see like uh, miracles or phenomena. But at the end, I think it's, or at the end of the day, I think it's just um, that the machine god is the Imperium's way of understanding technology. But in reality, the Tao don't need to make up a lie like a god because they know how their technology works because they, they build it. Yeah. Yeah, in all the codices, I've never heard of a machine god or the void dragon having to do anything with the Tao. So, prove me wrong, guys. Yeah. Next question. Last question. Uh, this is a repeat. Do you have one? Uh, if not, I have one real quick. Br Bradley Kr Krieger? Krieger? Do you think technology will begin to advance in the Imperium again with the return of the Primarchs? No. <laughs> I feel like they're too too much rooted into their old ways that there's no way that they will uh, change their ways, basically. Um, and the only way I see this happening is if the Emperor himself comes back and says, let's progress, but no. Yep. And those were the questions for this week. Thank you guys so much for sending them our way. Comment down below with more questions so that we can answer them for next week. And yeah, that's it. That's all we got, guys. As always, thank you for being awesome. Don't forget to hit up the Patreon page. It's only a dollar a month. And you get more epic videos. As always, Sound Alchemist. Kirsch 1. We are One Mind Syndicate. And we are out of here. <laughs>